He's like, he's like, nope. <laughs> you see that face? He's like, he's like, oh, hell no. Well, that hand in the finger shot is a really good example of where this starts to get really complex. Bagel. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more happening in this shot than you think. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React to Bad and Great CGI. So, today we're joined by Sam. Hi, my name's Sam. What's up, Sam? Hey. I'm the guy who's in the background. Here's my background reel. I'm kind of like the Bigfoot of the VFX <laughs> Artist React series. All right, let's jump in. <laughs> what are these screaming children? Is this Silent Hill 2? <gasps> is this Silent, no, it's Silent is Hill 4. Is this World War Z? Uh, she fell over. Uh-oh. Oh no! What is that? What? What the heck? What Cloud Man? Oh, gross. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> Captain Planet! <laughs> is that a train? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, like, he's like, nope. <laughs> you see that face? He's like, he's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> and he backs out of there. Green Lantern, is his, his limits are only his knowledge of military history. <laughs> that, that is his only limit. <laughs> Conjure a gun. I was like, oh, this AA gun from 1942. <laughs> Dude, he's so confident. He's not even Is looking. he talking to the camera? Is this he's Kevin Spacey, like, House of Cards <laughs> moment here? Oh, here we go. Oh, Military history. It. It's a propeller. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's from the Kitty Hawk. It's like he's never fought in actual wars, but he did go to the Smithsonian. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, why is there an asteroid field right there? I, miss, I must have missed something. What is this? <laughs> yeah. He's going What's in. What's he doing? He's, he's going in, dude. Wait. Oh, yeah. that's what he's doing. Two jets! <laughs> <laughs> what the? Uh, the giant fist technique. The Hulk. Yeah. He's one punch fist. man. He's just one punch man. <laughs> he's probably gonna get saved. There's he no way he falls into the sun. All right, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Which one are you? Which one are you? I'm Mr. That? Red. Yeah, you're Mr. Red. <laughs> yeah, Nico. You're Mohawk Man, and then I'm Gorgo. <laughs> Gorgo. <laughs> Runs Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, so um, <laughs> I think he's wearing pajamas for all these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they did it. Ryan Reynolds' body and Ryan Reynolds' mask are 100% CG. For some reason, they thought, you know what we could do? We can just make his entire body CG and we'll just track something onto his face. Easy peasy. I can see why they'd want to do this because he's this magical guy with all this energy coming off of him and he's constantly conjuring CG things. So they're going to need to animate his body for most of these shots anyways. Well, it turns out tracking something onto somebody's face in every single shot and making it look photoreal is very hard to do because your skin moves all over the place. You can't just track an object. You need to track it warping and stretching, and the mask is distracting. And honestly, that's like that's the number one thing. At the end of the day, if you've distracted the audience, you've pulled them out of this emotional suspension of disbelief, yeah. and you've reminded them that they're watching something that's fake. It's just crazy to compare how far we've come where it's like, they have this suit on the Green Lantern, but then they have the suits for time traveling in Avengers Endgame. And like, yeah. compare this to that, you know? So Avatar was basically the first 3D film in the rebirth of 3D cinema. Sam and I, when we were out in LA at the very beginning of our career out here, we did a bunch of visual effects for 3D work, stereoscopic work. Oh God. <laughs> And camera rigs for that stuff, basically, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Red One, the original Red camera, but it was like this big. If you wanted to shoot in 3D, you needed two of these cameras. And what you had to do is you had one sideways looking at your subject, and you mounted another one below, pointed down at an angled mirror, because you couldn't put them side by side, they're too thick, because you need the cameras to be, you know, just a few inches apart to simulate your eye distance. It's just a mess. It's just the worst way to film something. You know, in order to shoot a movie like Avatar, you can't be running around with 80 pound rigs, that's impossible. So they did the whole thing in CG, because that way you can just duplicate your camera and scoot it over and you get your CG camera. Now they film some things for real still, but it's such an easier process to make a film like this 3D when you're filming it in CG. These days you guys are probably familiar with like VR, or the Vive or the Oculus, that kind of stuff. And those little systems have 3D tracking. Now imagine 10 years ago, you're James Cameron and you hire an entire team of engineers to build that technology for you custom. And what they can do is they can use these little motion tracked rigs with a screen and they're fed in real time what the virtual camera would see. It's like looking through a VR headset. Also a fun little fact, in my opinion, Avatar was the first movie to have completely photorealistic flowing water in a, in a river. There's one shot in particular that stands out to me and I wonder if it still looks as good as I remember. Look at that. that. Look at that. <laughs> that looks great. 
That's nuts. Like, that is trippy. Yeah, that blew my mind when I saw it in theaters. I'm like, that water is real, but it's not. Out of everything in Avatar, this is the one thing I took away from it is the water in the bottom third of this one frame. <laughs> That's the thing that stuck with me the most from the visuals of this movie. So if you guys are enjoying the VFX Artist React series, you might want to consider heading on over to our Patreon. Our patrons get to vote on one of the scenes that we react to in the VFX Artist React series. And this time around, they picked 300. So let's jump in. This was the first movie that I saw where there were like an exorbitant amount of spear and sword piercing and it's just like so Ooh. visceral. I love the in and out of the camera too. Yeah, yeah. It's so well done. The CG blood too is even pretty. It's stylized, but yeah. it's cool. I like it. They, did they use like a zoom lens or did they put like camera side by side? I'll tell you after, after the scene. Wow, you just know it all. <laughs> that really? was my favorite part coming up right here. The leg slice? The leg slice. Oh, oh yeah. Man. So good. Yeah, that's great. You may not be able to tell, but this scene is basically just like six dudes in front of a green screen. All that background and everything else, it's, that's all fake. It's just Gerard Butler and a couple of like ripped guys stabbing these dudes. And one of the things they did to get this awesome effect, you'll notice there's a lot of slow motion, right? If you zoom in while in slow motion and only takes a tenth of a second to zoom in and you're filming at like 10 times slower than regular speed, that means you had to zoom in at 100th that speed in real time. And it's like, that's impossible. It's physically impossible. So they actually had multiple cameras set up at different focal lengths and they're filming the entire fight scene just in slow motion in one go. And they're not doing any crazy camera work or anything like that. It's just one camera wide, one camera medium, one camera close, and that's it. They are basically stitching one shot to the other shot. So they'll punch into the, the wide shot, and as it's zooming in, the close-up shot is kind of matched into it, and then that fills up the frame. And now we're at the close-up shot. Mm. And it's not an all low res and blurry, because you're not just cropping in on the wide shot. Super simple approach to this scene, but combined with some slow motion, some ramping, and obviously some great color work and a good CG background, it just yep. looks great. Those abs though, man. <laughs> That's really the key here is like, the abs are 100% real, no CG there. If you guys would like to be able to vote on scenes that you want us to react to, please head on over to our Patreon. There's a link in the description below. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting us. Helps us make all of this possible. All right, back to the videos. Hey. Oh, Spider-Man into the spider. I haven't finished watching this movie. Oh, it's such it's a so good cool. movie. I'm like halfway yeah. through it. All hand animated too. All of this stuff. A guy gets hit in the head with a bagel, and when that happens, the word bagel pops up. Yes. Bagel. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something really cool that's subconsciously happening in this scene. You aren't aware of it, but it just, it sells an emotion. So most animations, like actual cartoons, aren't animated at 24 frames per second. Most animations get away with doing 12 frames per second, so they do it at half rate. Miles, he is being animated at 12 frames per second, like a classic cartoon. You can really see it here. Camera's moving at 24 frames per second, but Miles is frozen for every other frame in this shot. That's so cool. Peter Parker, the more refined, better Spider-Man, he's being animated at 24 frames per second. Because oh, it's a 24 frames per second movie. That's cool. And what this is doing is it's showing you that Miles is not fully graceful yet. He hasn't quite learned how to be Spider-Man. As he becomes better and better at being Spider-Man, he's becoming 24 frames per second. It's such a cool idea. One character just feels a little more clumsy, and one feels just a little more fluid. I cannot wait to finish this movie. Now we have plenty more cool shots to react to, but so do you, I bet. So if you have any ideas, leave a comment below and we'll check it out too. Back to the VFX shots. Yes. Dude, I got amped when I saw this. It was the scene that promised us that these Matrix sequels were gonna be good. <laughs> it made a promise to us, but it didn't keep it. Uh, it's such a cool scene, though. Well, I love the choreography. The chore and, like, yeah. The, the, the move right here. Oh, mm. Look at this, look at that choreography. I know parts of this look fake, but a lot of it looks really good. I agree. And very, very realistic. I love this, yeah. dude. <laughs> that camera move. Wait, so all the dog pile, is that um I think it's all CG. Really? This this is cool. 
So you might think it's like, oh, it's just a clone shot, but there's so much more happening in this shot than you think. These guys in the background, like in the very background, they're just dudes that kind of look like Hugo Weaving. Like you can clearly see it's just another guy. <laughs> He's just a dude with the same haircut. Like right behind him, those are CG heads, and those are flawless. It helps that they're not emoting. Yeah. A scripting king is, is the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how they're doing it. They're recording Hugo Weaving yeah. on a photo capture stage. They set up like multiple cameras that are all recording him at uncompressed data feeds and he does his thing, whatever he's gonna do. So they're basically scanning his face in real time while he does his performance. And they're also capturing all the texture information of his skin while he does a performance. Dude. Mm. <laughs> Thanos, dude. <laughs> I love face maps like this. <laughs> so there's the, the capture right there. It's, it's actually really a creative way to do CG faces for people. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have an artist go in and animate where the wrinkles are and try to do all the stuff. You just, Hugo Weaving just does his thing and you capture every frame of it and you're done. This is the exact same technique they use for LA Noir. Mm. It's just in LA Noir, you're getting like the low res texture and the low res polygon version. If you just yeah. up the fidelity of that, that's what you get here. But look, you cannot tell the difference between the CG and the real there. Those are both identical. I think it was 40 terabytes of data for a video capture of Hugo Weaving's performance. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't imagine that these models of these faces were so high resolution that people weren't even really able to view <laughs> them in even remotely real time. Probably they sit up like with a terminal and they're just like compute and they step away for like an hour and they get a frame. It's definitely a testament to automating the CG process. The less of the artist's hand that you can put into your footage, I feel generally the more realistic it can look. Dude, bold Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, we are one of his biggest fans, and uh, he apparently is one of our biggest fans. He stopped by for a night to come down and goof off with us. Head on over to youtube.com slash corridor to check it out. <laughs> Ooh, the mask. I watched Woo! this movie like a month ago. With, Did you really? With, with my boy. I loved it. He was like playing with blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's some old school like Looney Tunes effects here. Just teeth, dude. <laughs> but man, what a great ingenious use of visual effects to like do some comedy. So we're gonna look at some really messed up pictures for a second here. And you guys would be surprised to find that these pictures, they're in all the Simpsons episodes, like these weird messed up pictures. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Like on purpose? Oh. Yeah, these are all in there on purpose. So what you're seeing here is a, a, it's a technique known as smearing. So in animation, there's no such thing as motion blur because you're just drawing one frame and then drawing the next frame and drawing the next frame. But motion blur is what cues us. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Motion blur is what cues us into motion. This is something I've always been aware of, but I've never stopped to see a frame from it. Jim Carrey's character, he's into cartoons and the mask is his realization of these effects brought to life. So the animators had to do smearing in real life. I mean, you can see it here, he's running up with his feet. That's technically smearing right there. Yeah, so there, there we go, wow. So they're actually taking a cartoon effect here and replicating that in real life on film and trying to make it actually look real. Look at his hands there and the way that board smears. Like, that's not regular motion blur. That's an artist going in and animating these smears. You can ah. see it really well there too. Like the face is crystal clear and there's a long stretched head behind it. Now obviously if that was real motion blur, the whole thing would be a blur. Yeah, that's cool. But they're being artistic with it. It's an ingenious use of the technique to make his cartoon character exist in the real world. Mm -hmm. And it's a visual effect that hadn't been done anywhere else. Nobody's done smearing in real life. Yeah. Ooh, Star Trek, where am I? <laughs> Favorite movie. Is this the original Star Trek? This or the, is, or the, uh, old, the older one. Wait, why are we watching the original fight scene from Star Wars? The oh, scene being so. Oh, are we talking CG oh. add ons? Are we oh, talking heck about yeah. Dope Vader? Dope Vader, man. <laughs> what, what is this? When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil does. <laughs> Dang, they're fighting, like legit. Oh, dude, he's got moves. Vader wasn't even looking! <laughs> he didn't need to look at anybody! It's called the Force, man. Is that a CG set? That's gotta be. Mm -hmm. How did they get Obi-Wan? Did they deep fake him? Dude, the fire on his arm as he's swinging, like, that was pretty good. I like the little reflections on the uh, eyeballs. Yeah. 
All right, so this is scene 38 reimagined by the YouTube channel Fix It and Post, FX It and Post. You guys, if you want to see the scene, you should head over to their channel and check it out. We'll have a link in the description below. Yeah. I really, really like this scene, and I think it was really cool of them to do this. And now they were also working on it for a very, very, very long time. Look at look at Vader's helmet. You see the real light reflections in his helmet? Yeah. So those lights were actually there on set. I feel like really the most difficult part of this whole scene was getting Al Guinness's face onto that actor. So they're using shots from the movie. So they'd have to stabilize the original footage and retrack it back in to their shot. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. That picture of Al Guinness's face is not from this moment in the scene, so the lighting doesn't match. Yeah. Is that, is that like a 3D model? It's a 3D model. Do you know what? The way this is shot, the lightsabers in front of his face, the hood there covering him up, and all this action really goes a long way to cover that up because it just needs to be something that you glance at out of the corner of your eye. Don't waste your time on it making it more than it has to be. And to me, what this scene really does is it speaks to how powerful the individual has become in the world of visual effects. When you can have just a couple people, if not one person sitting down, remaking this scene from a classic film and arguably making it even cooler from their bedroom, in their, on their computer. And that's the world we live in these days when it comes to visual effects. It's pretty, pretty cool. You look lonely. Blade Runner, what a trippy, trippy, trippy movie. One woman's a hologram, the other one's a hired prostitute. That's so weird. Wow. Who we, boys? Ryan Gosling's <laughs> just like, uh. Um. <laughs> he's just really sweaty now. He's like really nervous. Yeah, he, he was this. <laughs> this is the, one of the cool scenes in the movie because it's weird, but it's also really cool and you can't turn away from it. So you're probably wondering, they must have practiced this a whole lot. It did take a certain amount of practice <laughs> oh, really? because they did both have to do the same performance. But with that hand in the finger shot is a really good example of like the, where this starts to get really complex. It's not just like two images kind of transparent on top of each other. Yeah, they're like clipping through each they, other. They feel like, yeah, they're clipping. In order to make, make the fingers and these two bodies kind of move in and out of each other in 3D space, basically they have to take the performances, they have to then also project them onto rough 3D models of the characters. It's called projection mapping. Projection mapping is a really common technique that's used in visual effects. It's kind of like those sidewalk paintings, those chalk drawings, where if you stand at the right angle, it all kind of lines up into an image. Our really old video, Brush With Death. Brush With Death. That was all projection mapping. That's how he did the effect of like the graffiti kind of coming to life or like being stretched out and then lines up and pops into real life. We just projection mapped it. Let's imagine trying to animate a 3D model to perfectly line up <laughs> with the footage just so you can stamp that footage back onto it. So that way they can kind of go in and out of each other in 3D space. That and that's so complicated. And it is super, yeah. super, super complicated. It also looks super cool and it was totally worth all that work. Also, it's an effect that serves a really deep emotional purpose for the character, and it makes it even more powerful for that reason. You know, Blade Runner 2049 has the best digital human I've ever seen in my entire life. Really? I really. agree. Made again for you. So Harrison Ford is completely CG. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I didn't realize until we sat down on this couch that that woman right there was completely CG. Oh, she, she was CG? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't even get this scene <laughs> when I was watching Blade Runner 2049. I didn't even notice it. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I call myself a professional VFX artist. Well, I was thinking, did they find someone who looked very similar and very close? That what they did is they went and to prove that they could do it, they recreated her in other scenes Dude. from the original Blade Runner. That is insane. It is absolutely insane. Because they're also simulating like the slight anamorphic bokeh. The, the, yeah, the depth of field. The, the reason this works, outside of incredible expertise going into it, is no extreme expressions. No extreme movements. Solid directional lighting. That's what did it for me. Yeah, motion's a little weird. <laughs> this bullet in my brain's making me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have like a button you can press to kill this robot? You know, you made it. Why do you have to shoot it? Like, get blood all over your office? Next door, some worker gets shot in the knee and they're like, ah! Oh, yeah, it costs you two million <laughs> credits, space credits and stuff. <laughs> If you guys love this series, VFX Artists React, and you want to see us do more of these really cool concepts, please consider subscribing to the channel. We actually have 
some pretty cool projects coming up. We just got another motion capture suit from Xsense, and we have some really crazy ideas. Do you guys want to see us to try to do an obstacle course where we put on the motion capture suit, but all the obstacles are virtual, so we have to like look at a screen and like try to figure out where to do to like <laughs> complete this course? And on Corridor, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves came out and decided to goof around with us for a video. We were filming at a gas station and it got robbed. Wow, who would have thought? <laughs> Go to Corridor and check it out if you haven't. You want to see us react to something? Leave a comment. Show I'll see the whole weekend, all that stuff. So enjoy. This, this weekend? This, this weekend. weekend's on us. <laughs> but you know hey, what? This week, this weekend, you're you're hanging out with the crew. <laughs> you know.